Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bharat Nagpal. You're watching iGAN and Honor's new Honor Play comes out today. We've had this device for over 10 days and this is going to be our review. So let's quickly get started. Now each year several companies take out flagship devices and over the past couple of years many companies have been making flagship killers so devices from companies like Xiaomi from companies like OnePlus and even companies like Honor have been flagship killer devices allowing you to buy flagship specifications at a much lower price now Honor is taking that one step further by launching the Honor Play now this device not only has flagship specifications but it has a mid high range pricing as well so it'll break down the price to the under 30000 rupee price bracket even the under 25000 rupee price bracket and somewhere around the 20000 price you will start to get specifications that earlier were not possible Now the Honor Play has everything that you would expect from a 2018 flagship device. You do have a extremely modern design with extremely minimal bezels. The phone has a 6.3 inch 2340 by 1080 pixel resolution display, basically a full HD plus display, and it also has a notch allowing you to get more screen real estate in the size of the device. So despite being a 6.3 inch screen size phone, the phone is extremely handleable with one hand and is extremely comfortable to use. On the back of the device you do get dual cameras and on the front of the device you do get portrait effects which you also get on the rear camera the phone also has 3d portrait lighting effects which we'll talk about in just a minute but for around 20 to 24000 rupees for the two variants one with 4 gigabyte and one with 6 gigabyte of ram is this phone going to be worth your money more importantly as the company is aiming this towards gaming is this phone going to take on the other flagship killers and is this going to be worth it for people who are not into gaming as much from a specifications perspective the phone already gets top of the line specifications as the chipset you get the Kirin 970 AI chipset which is the company's flagship chipset used on devices like the P20 Pro and the Honor 10 it's got four cores at 2.36 gigahertz and four cores at 1.8 gigahertz like i mentioned you get 4 gigs or 6 gigs of ram and 64 gigabyte of on board storage you also have expandability using the micro sd card for up to 256 gigabytes it is a hybrid tray so you do not get dedicated slots You also get a fairly large battery as a 3750 milliamp hour battery with 18 watts of fast charge capabilities so this phone charges up really quickly as well. Now what makes the Honor Play special for gaming is the fact that the Mali G72 MP12 GPU which is a 12 core GPU is paired up with their new tech called GPU Turbo. Now according to Honor this GPU Turbo technology will improve GPU efficiency by about 60% and also reduce the battery consumption by about 30%. So if you're gaming which is where a gpu intensive task is taking place you will not only consume less battery but you will also get better gaming and graphics performance now because it is a flagship device you will get that kind of performance from the phone so whether you're using it in day to day life or whether you're checking out benchmarks you will find that overall result from the device is pretty impressive for the price bracket that the device is aimed at in fact it is comparable to many flagships that are available in 2018 what's also interesting is that paired with the GPU Turbo which comes out of the box there is nothing special that you need to do to enable it you will get impressive gaming performance right out of the box so whether you're playing fast paced racing games or online multiplayer games which are also made slightly more interesting so if you're playing games like PUBG you do have a 4D smart shock functionality which will automatically detect on screen gunfire and also detect sounds to give you vibration feedback on the device while you're playing the game so almost like a dual shock controller on PlayStation you will get the device to give you vibration feedback although personally i feel that this will also increase battery life consumption but this is a really cool feature to have on especially if you're playing games like PUBG which do have a lot of gunfire in them now what's also interesting is that the device does offer something that they call AI 3D surround sound so they have the Hisson 3D technology which allows you to use your headphones and get a good 3D experience and this is also again tuned around games like PUBG and Mobile Legends and whether you're using 
headphones or earphones, you will get this experience on both. It will allow you to detect your enemies from a distance or whether they are close. All of this information will be available to you and this will make the gaming experience slightly better for you. Now, of course, this is also paired up with the fact that the device continues to have a 3.5 mm headphone jack, which is sort of crucial if you're going to be gaming on the go. You don't need a dongle because you want to continue using the USB-C port for charging your device if the battery runs out. Now, with all of these features combined, you'll find that the gaming experience is quite immersive. And if you're somebody who games frequently almost every day, the overall result from your gaming will be quite interesting and you will thoroughly enjoy gaming on this device. Now, all the gaming things aside, the phone is also quite sleek in its build. It's only 7.48 millimeters in terms of thickness. You do have a slight bit of camera bump, but the company includes a screen protector inside the box, which also gives it a matte type look, but also completely removes the camera bump in its entirety, giving the device's camera protection from any kind of falls or scratches that you may get from placing the device on the table. The overall build of the phone is also pretty sturdy and uh, the phone does have a matte finish back panel, which also feels really comfortable to use for extended periods of time. You do have a fingerprint sensor on the back, which allows you to get into the device extremely efficiently. And you also get the standard face unlock features. Now, this is not the 3D face unlock that you see on devices like the iPhone 10 and several other new devices. This is a standard face unlock, which allows you to get into the device rather quickly. Now, the cameras are also another interesting aspect of this phone. You get a 16 megapixel main camera with a two megapixel secondary camera, which also does have AI functionality. This allows you to detect things before you capture them. So the phone will know if you're looking at plants or pets, even human faces, the AI automatically detects it. Now, this feature comes in really handy and it enhances the image accordingly. For example, if you're somebody who clicks pictures of food a lot, the AI will automatically detect that you're clicking pictures of food and will automatically give you the best possible settings for that image. Now, you can turn this off if you're more of a manual photographer. You can also have a full on pro mode, which allows you to have finer control over your image capture. Video recording is also at 4K and it's pretty stable. You also have EIS and AIS support, but that only works till 1080p. If you are shooting video in 4K, bear in mind that it might come out shaky. The front facing camera is also a 16 megapixel camera and is extremely sharp, especially if you're clicking selfies. You also get a portrait selfie mode, which allows you to blur out the background and uh, get your face uh, really in focus. This looks absolutely brilliant on this device and it detects the edges of your face, your hair quite well, and you will get a good amount of bokeh in the background without blurring out your ear or your hair. You also get something that is 3D lighting effects, again, almost identical to the iPhone 10. You're able to set up various shooting modes and shooting styles to give you 3D portrait lighting effects on the front camera as well as on the back camera. So if you're clicking pictures of a subject, you will get the same effects. The user experience and the user interface are also well tuned and work really well on the Honor Play. The 970 chipset works in tandem with EMUI, which is on this device. You also get Android 8.1 out of the box. You will get the Android P update pretty soon is what Honor is claiming. As soon as it comes out in a month or so, the company plans to push out the Android P update. So you will get software updates on the frequent on this device as well because they want to constantly tune the user experience to suit best for gamers. Now, EMUI also offers up extreme levels of customization. You can also change the way you navigate. You can change the way the screen is laid out. So whether you want all your apps on the home screen or you want a app draw system, you can get both of those options on the device as well. You also get the ability to duplicate apps. So standard customization features are available on the device and all of these work really well and you will thoroughly enjoy the usage experience of the device. I would prefer that that a gaming device does have a stock Android versus something like an EMUI skin, but the skin works really well and they've tuned it to work really well or with the chipset and so you get a really good overall outcome. Now, despite the fact that this device is aimed at gamers, you get a really good, well-rounded device for a really good price. You also get excellent phone call capabilities. The speakers are really loud and the audio tuning inside the device allows you to get a really good overall audio experience from the device. So whether you're listening to music, whether you're watching videos or whether you're just on a phone call, the audio experience is pretty impressive. You also get really good quality noise cancellation. So the person on the other side really gets to hear your voice clearly. 
Battery life is also pretty impressive with the 3750 milliamp hour battery. It'll last you over a day easily. You won't find yourself charging the device. Again, unless you're a gamer and you're gaming on the go, you won't find yourself charging the device almost towards the end of the day with which you'll still have 30 to 40% battery left on this phone. So battery optimization is really on point on the Honor Play and you will get a overall good battery outcome from the device. Plus you're bundled with an 18 watt charger, which will allow you to charge up your device in just over over an hour. The phone is available in two colors, a midnight black, the one that we have here. It's a matte black finish. I would recommend that you get this, but it's also available in a navy blue, which is a different color if that's something that you're interested in. All in all, the Honor Play is an exciting bundle for anyone, whether you're a gamer or otherwise, to look at. The phone is extremely well priced. It's extremely well-rounded with great specifications, excellent performance, and good battery life. And you also get impressive phone call capabilities from the phone. If Honor prices this right and makes it available in abundance, this will be a really good selling phone for the company. And this will be a really good option for somebody looking to undercut the 30,000 rupee price with an impressive device. Now that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or queries regarding the Honor Play, you can leave those in the comments below. Then smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're not already already a part of Team Aigyan along with the bell notification icon to get updates on the frequent. This was Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.